friends welcome to tarunayas today we will be discussing delhi current affairs of 28th of november 2022 so let's start with the first news of the day the first news is about the leaf soft shell turtle and sea cucumber so this is the this is soft shell turtle and this is sea cucumber sea cucumber basically are um they are non chordates which means which implies that they lack they lack what is called as neurocord they do not possess vertebral vertebral column right so they are they are columnless uh, organisms they have a soft uh, soft body and they fall in the phylum phylum echinodermatas all right so you um, these sea cucumbers and this is this is turtle which is uh, in the fa- in the in the in the phylum reptilia reptilia which are which are vertebrates all right so this was a little about the taxonomy of uh, these two animals now why they were in news now we know that the 19th meeting which ha- which happened uh, which was organized at panama of sites of sites right that is convention on international trade in endangered species of wild flora and fauna now in the meeting it was decided that india had proposed to transfer the leaf soft shell turtle from appendix 2 to appendix 1 of the sites and in the same conference it was decided to include sea cucumbers in appendix 2 of the convention all right now the leaf soft shell turtle what is this leaf soft shell turtle it is a fresh water turtle which is endemic to peninsular india that's why india had proposed it to move from appendix 2 to appendix 1 which will grant it a higher protection higher protection as compared to the appendix 2 right so this is endemic to india and it inhibits ri- rivers and reservoirs now this will not be found around the marsh islands around uh, around estuaries where the water mixes or or the sea water right so it will be found in the rivers because it is a fresh water turtle all right it is distribution is restricted to the southern peninsular india and it is endemic to peninsular india andhra pradesh karnataka kerala madhya pradesh maharashtra odisha the correct spelling will be odisha right odisha and tamil nadu in the kaveri This is Tunga Bhadra, not Tunga Bhadra. It is Tunga Bhadra, Ghat Prabha, Bhavani, Godavari, and Moyar drainage. So these are some of the rivers in which uh, this leaf soft shell turtle is found. The conservation status of this leaf soft shell turtle is critically endangered. That is the reason why India had seek to grant it a little higher protection from Appendix Two to Appendix One, and this is critically endangered in IUCN Red List, and it has been. listed on schedule 4 of the wildlife protection act of 1972 what are the threats the threats is in intensive exploitation that is poaching illegally con- illegal consumption it has also been illegal uh, illegally traded abroad for its meat and uh, and for its calipee right so benefits what will be the benefits of listing it in appendix 1 of size because listing of this turtle species would ensure it legal international trade in the species does not take place for the commercial purpose and the fatty gelatinous tissue that um, this calipe is actually this flatty uh, fatty gelatinous light yellow substance which is found immediately over the lower shell of the turtle so this is what the calipe and this turtle is being illegally traded for its meat and for its calipe so ensuring its inclusion in appendix 1 would ensure it a higher protection and it would ensure that the that the um, the the international trade for the comfort commercial purpose does not take place all right now let's move on to the sea cucumber basically a uh, sea cucumbers they are invertebrates like i have already explained it to you they belong to large animal group called echinodermans so this is the taxonomic feature of uh, 
of sea cucumber and you may not necessarily have to go into the details but you should remember this sea uh, this echinoderms or echinodermata the phylum it consists of all those um, all those organisms like sea urchins and starfish so starfish you might have seen in cartoons etc so this is how the starfish look like then we have sea urchin sea urchin basically is a shelled organism and it is a round blackish to brownish shell which consists lot of lot of spines and yes it is it is a seafood people do eat it especially in the southern peninsula in, in coastal uh, areas in coastal states of uh, of um, india sea urchin is is edible sea urchin is taken is consumed as food right so sea cucumbers they are they are marine environments in fact basically if we look at the taxonomic features of echinodermata then rarely we have the freshwater fish uh, freshwater organisms mostly they are marine and throughout the world they are found and they are found from shallow to deep sea environments sea cucumbers they are benthic benthic means they are found at the bottom of the sea or the ocean so so basically because they live a sedentary life and they are not they are uh, sessile by sessile means that they are um, they are attached to a substratum they are not mobile all right so they are attached to substratum and wherever the current takes the ocean current takes them they flow with the ocean current so they are benthic they are marine and uh, however their larva is pl uh, planktonic that means it flows on the ocean current so as to so as to have easy spread so as to have wide distribution right because the concentration of a particular organism in a region or in a particular uh, uh, ecological habitat poses a threat to its extinction right so therefore most of the organisms they have this inherent uh, mechanism or the nature has the inherent mechanism to ensure the proper distribution that's why the larvae of sea cucumber are planktonic they float on water all right so they can breed um, asexually as well as uh, sexually sexually means via the uh, via gametes there will be fusion of male and female gametes and the and the uh, zygote will be formed and it will then different the cells will differentiate and it will take the shape of sea cucumber which is basically oblong oblong means something like this all right now asexually how does the asexual reproduction takes place it is also called as vegetative reproduction in plants and it is it occurs by budding so if this is sea cucumber a bud here will be formed which will then grow which will then grow and finally it will detach from the main body and then it will uh, attach itself to substratum and continue to grow and differentiate into the into an adult right so this is how the asexual reproduction takes place and sexual reproduction i have already discussed so now sea cucumbers they are integral part of the coral system and you can say that they are the one of the main by products of sea cucumber digestion that is uh, of sand is calcium carbonate which is essential for reef building which is essential for reef building so we can see here a kind of a mutual uh, dependence you know uh, so there is a mutual dependence so we know that all organisms on earth they are interdependent on each other and once by product and the by product of one organism is utilized by the other organism so this is how the sea cucumber is also working right so they are also known as the garbage collector what happens they try they recycle nutrients and they keep the coral reefs in good conditions free from all pest and disease causing bacteria virus fungus etc etc according to the wildlife conservation society india sea cucumbers were the most frequently trafficked marine species in india from 2015 to 2021 in fact tamil nadu recorded the highest number of marine wildlife seizures during this period in 2020 the lakshadweep island administration it had created the first conservation area for sea cucumbers now any any organism howsoever small is essential for maintaining the ecology of of the of the i mean of the earth so sea cucumber being the garbage collector you can say they they are the basically the filters of ocean or filters of sea they keep the sea clean they are essential their importance their extinction will cause havoc to the overall cleanliness and health of the ocean or marine ecosystem now let us move on to the next news of the day the national center for good governance 
so what is the context why this was in news now this national center for good governance it has re received high praise from the maldives government for its capacity building program for maldivian civil servants you see that india has history of training civil servants of different nation in fact the bhutan's diplomats and civil servants are trained in india we have trained uh, civil servants from afghanistan from bangladesh and now we are training civil servants from maldives so what is this national center for good governance it is basically an autonomous institute under the aegis of department of administrative reforms and public grants that is um, dapg government of india it has been set up to assist in bringing about governance reforms you see in any country governance is of utmost importance governance basically comprises of the ethos pathos and logos of the governing structure and these three terms were given by aristotle so you will be studying about this more in your ethics paper so basically governance implies the rules and regulations and the structure uh, established to in order to govern the nation in order to specifically or more technically govern the state so basically the center was established to assist in the governance reforms that what structural changes or structural reforms are needed so as to have an effective and efficient uh, efficient um, you know administration so and how does the governance reforms uh, takes place or how does the governance reforms are brought in by studies by training by knowledge sharing by promotion of the good ideas etc it seeks to carry out the policy relevant research and prepare case studies curate training courses for civil servants for from india and other developing countries head office is in new delhi and it has a branch office at masuri its objective is to have a its objective is to function as a national repository on information on best practices initiatives and methodologies that promote good governance e governance etc to advise on key issues in governance and develop synergy across various ministries department of government of india and state governance state governments the next news of the day is about the computer security incident response team now why this was in news basically the government of india is planning to set up a computer security incident response team at central electricity authority that is cea under power ministry to avert cyber attacks on the country's power grid see we have seen attacks on power grid of countries in fact in maharashtra the blackout the electricity blackout, blackout that had happened was supposedly being carried was supposedly carried out by hackers by attacker groups right we know that cyber space is now has now become the fourth space or fourth domain of warfare right and what is the fifth domain fifth domain it is a biological warfare the information warfare is another domain so the fourth domain of warfare is now the cyber space so therefore all the countries they have they are endeavoring to secure their cyber space so does india so india in the, in its pursuant to have a secure and safe cyber space which is not protected from the unethical and illegal hackers but also from the adverse um, adversary countries or adversary nation which are planning or working against india's interest the officers uh, will be recruited in this response team through the combined engineering service the examination of which is conducted by union public service commission that is upsc the officer will be trained to detect the cyber security incident create awareness among stakeholders monitor incidents and respond accordingly red echo the this was quite a news uh, that time a hacker group which is affiliated with the chinese government had targeted the control rooms managing critical power grids in 2021 the campaign could have caused the widespread blackout but the chinese hackers they failed to break into the system and no data breach was detected to monitor and prevent such cyber attacks on the power grid this incident response team is being created The next news of the day is about the Nyingma sect of Buddhism. See, Buddhism came into existence after Lord Buddha, after Lord Buddha achieved Nirvana or attained, attained enlightenment. 
so after his enlightenment he started to spread the knowledge which he had gained through enlightenment however with the passage of time the knowledge which was uh, which was spread by by lord buddha it started to it started to have different versions the narration started to change and therefore emerged new school of thought the first school was this is the oldest school which is the sutrayana and we have vajrayana these are the two important school in sutrayana school there were two important school the hinayana and mahayana you will be studying more about it in details in your ancient history in your art and culture uh, course however however let me give you a brief about hinayana and mahayana sect hinayana is known as the lesser vehicle and mahayana is known as the greater vehicle when we speak of hinayana it adhered or restricted itself to the original preachings or original doctrine of buddhism and therefore therefore there was no concept of bodhi sattvas with mahayana buddhism that means after the fourth buddhist council uh, at during the during the reign of kanishka the mahayana is, i mean a mahayana school emerged right mahayana school it emerged and what happened it started to deify lord buddha early in hinayana there is no concept of deification of lord buddha however in mahayana buddhism which is majorly followed hinayana buddhism has less followers and mahayana buddhism has more followers started to have deification of buddha started to take lord buddha as god and worship god, lord buddha so this is the basic concept of mahayana and hinayana they have uh, the signs which are uh, which signify major events of lord buddha for example his uh, renunciation of the world his renunciation of this worldly life his married life etc etc so now let us see the ningmaya sect why was it news this was a news because a boy from spiti valley in himachal pradesh has been identified as the reincarnation of the late taglung setrung renpoche now let us see what this ningma sect is and we will also talk about the rinpoche basically this is the oldest of all the buddhist sects in buddhism i mean in, in tibetan buddhism which we had seen here the ningma kagyu sakyu and geluk sect so it is the second largest out of the four buddhist sects in tibetan buddhism the sect emphasizes on the mystical aspects of the vajrayana tradition and it emphasizes on tantric rituals worship and yoga so you see in the original preachings or the in the, uh, in the original preachings of lord buddha there was no emphasis on the tantrism right however when buddhism started to spread in the uh, started to spread in the valley of ladakh in sikkim in him, in foothills of himalaya tibet china etc etc started to come slowly slowly in contact with the hinduism that was already prevalent there so therefore both the religion they started to influence each other and buddhism and a new sect in buddhism emerged that is vajrayana buddhism which had the influence of tantrism so therefore vajrayana vajrayana buddhism is also tantric buddhism right so it emphasizes on the tantric ritual worship yoga etc it has been um, it ha the founder of ningmaya lineage of tibetan buddhism is guru padma sambhav who who came to tibet in the in, in 18th century ce and the followers of the sects they are spread across tibet Bhutan, Ladakh, Sikkim, and other Himalayan Buddhist pockets. There are four so schools of Tibetan Buddhism, that is Ningmaya, Kagyu, Sakya, and Geluk, or it is also known as Gelukpa. Now let us talk about Tanglung Setrung Rinpoche, who was a founder scholar, renowned for his expertise in Tibetan tantric school. He used to live in Takthok Monastery in Ladakh. So a prelim question can be formed from here that where is the Takthok Monastery located? It is located in Ladakh, and it it is located in Ladakh, and it is dedicated to Ningmaya sect of Buddhism, and uh, the followers of the faith cons uh, consulted Rinpoche widely. let us see the indo pacific regional dialogue now this dialogue it was scheduled um, and it was held from 23rd of november to 25th of november now we know that for india indo pacific region is of utmost important not only when it comes to prosperity and security of the littoral state but also when it comes to when it comes to india to emerge as a regional security provider and a regional power all right So this was basically an apex level international annual conference of the Indian Navy. 
and it was organized by national maritime foundation we will talk about national maritime foundation too it is an annual international conference that seeks to foster an exchange of ideas promote deliberations on maritime issues which are relevant to indo pacific region and the theme of the year 2022 was operationalizing the indo pacific oceans initiative now we talk about national maritime foundation now this was established in the year 2005 it is the nations it is the nation's sole maritime think tank that concentrates upon the entire gamut of activities related with india's maritime interest all right and all the policy relevant research on maritime matters the indo pacific ocean initiative it was articulated by indian prime minister on at the 14th of east asia summit in the year 2019 basically indian indo pacific ocean initiative is going to be a comprehensive inclusive construct for regional cooperation that is focused on seven interconnected spokes or pillars which are maritime security maritime ecology maritime resources disaster risk reduction and management trade connectivity and maritime transport capacity building and resource sharing science technology and academic cooperation So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching Tarun IS. You can download the uh, PDF from our Telegram channel. The link will be given in the description below. Have a nice day.